Can you tell us a little bit about the roadmap for Envoy um, in the months ahead? Okay, so um, so Envoy is really a, a community-driven project. So we don't have any like specific feature roadmap saying like this will be landed in uh, like 1.21, 1.22, or anything like that. Um, anyone are welcome to contribute to the project and uh, to drive each uh, features by their own. So um, we do have some um, roadmap for specific features like um, the two big area right now happening is the HTTP3 support. Google is heavily invested, uh, invested in that. Um, and another area is the WebAssembly extensions. Um, that was like uh, invested from a couple of years ago. Now it's in the, still in the alpha stage. Um, it's um, because of uh, the both the extension mechanism is in the in its early day and the WebAssembly uh, ecosystem is also in its early day. Uh, we're trying to stabilize it, make it more usable for for our users. Um, that's also driven by. Um, still community as well. Um, so we are, uh, as Tetris, we have invested in that as well. Thank you. Have you guys done any like uh, performance testing for the, the WASM environment versus like a native C++ filter? Um, so the um, that's a good good question. So the WebAssembly performance is like a very well asked. Um, it really depends on the situation. I would say um, I do see if you have a, like very simple um, filter that might be. Um, I think it's a half performance uh, performance of the C++ stuff. Um, it really depends on how you do that. Like if you have more like small string copies, it really degrades the performance. Um, if you're just like doing some stats around the the traffic with a WebAssembly, it's not that bad. Um, and the, the glue code between WebAssembly and Envoy is not really well tuned. Like there's a lot of copy. We just want to make it work. So yeah, those are things uh, that could be improved uh, in the future. So it, it really depends on the, on the use case. I guess I have a follow-up question then. Um, for the, the low-level ABI uh, for Envoy, are yes. you guys, does, guys going to use the WASM ABI as your considered stable um, internal ABI, or are you, are you going to uh, like finalize an internal design and then stick with that? Um, so the... The WASM ABI that uh, Envoy interacts with WebAssembly modules called Proxy WASM. That's in a like, separate GitHub project. Uh, we're trying to stabilize that, but I think the version right now is 0 0.1 or 0 0.2, I think. So um, it will be stabilized over the time. At this moment, we don't, uh, it's not really stable right now because there's more use case. We might change that to adopt the real use case we don't we don't want to lock ourselves um, to some specific ABI which is not used anywhere else so um, that's the current state but we're trying to make that as stable as possible um, in the future okay cool because I just asked because uh, I, I asked a question in the envoy slack yesterday about using like the C++ DLL kind of system for uh, the dynamic like for example, loading a filter instead of using WASM, um, we could point to an external C++ plugin, um, and then we might not have the negative performance effects. But uh, I believe I think Matt mentioned something about finalizing the stable ABI inside of Envoy before we ever get to that. Yeah. So um, I would say the current WASM ABI is still like um, should be stable, uh, more stable than the what uh, Envoy C++ filter API. Because we don't version that, we don't do any uh, have any back, back uh, backward compatibility assurance on that. Um, that can be changed anytime. And uh, the filters in the Envoy mainstream repo, if you use any API, we, we do test on all of them. So 
we do updates how they use those like filter API extension API. Um, but if you have your own in-house ones, then when you upgrade Envoy, you might need to change your code to adapt to like new version, like um, when Envoy have the filter API changes. Um, that should be like less likely if you use a web uh, WebAssembly API to do the uh, to do the interaction with Envoy. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. So questions from more of a user perspective. Envoy has a very fast release pipeline. Where the versions are released every quarter and after a year they're usually deprecated. For most companies when the main uh, competitor Nginx is barely releasing anything, there is a high toll here on maintenance and up upgrading versions. Is there any thoughts done around this, uh, this issue? Um, so, your, so the question is about the Envoy release cycle is very fast yes. and it's hard to maintain over the time. Um, so, so I think we, we increase, increase the support uh, cycle to one year right now. Every stable version have one, uh, one year supported for security fix stuff. Um, so um, I think that that's wasn't, wasn't the case in like a couple of years ago. We only support like la latest release and only master. Um, so yeah, there, and we try to make the, we have the compatibility policy about the deprecated, like we only remove deprecated field in, um, in two releases. We, we, we can, we do have some sort of that. Are you saying that is still very high? Yes, uh, so um, I'm coming from Niantic. You might know it us as the company behind company uh, Pokemon Go. Mm -hmm. uh, our clusters are there for over four years. It's really hard for us to now go and deploy a new version with all the testing and everything and the guarantee that nothing will break when you are deploying a new version versus the engines that we were using before that, to mm -hmm. be honest, we haven't changed the version through all the mm -hmm. life. Um, so the, the, well, the answer to that will be, um, as a project, we are also short of the resources to maintain older versions, um, like over a year. If, um, so if there's, uh, if you have resources or anyone else, other company have resource can like contribute and make a commitment to the project, so you're welcome to do so. Uh, like maintain older version, more longer supported. Um, you can contact me or contact in, in the uh, Envoy Slack to make that proposal and have the um, enough resources funded there. We can make it happen. But the reality is we don't have unlimited resource. So uh, there's from project maintenance perspective, we don't have um, enough maintainers to keep the that support for like two years or like support more versions. So yeah, that's uh, well uh, something to think about. Even one stable version that can once per year is good enough. Can I ask another question? Uh, sure. So if you're asking for um, the so th there's there's a, like different like there's people asking for like yes. people want a new feature to land it in a stable version faster. So they they want they only want to uh, deploy stable versions. So it's I think it. You don't have to really like upgrade to the latest stable version every quarter because the support cycle is um, it's one year, right? You can upgrade like every two versions, and you still have some sort of uh, compatibility um, because we we, we remove the duplicated stuff. We remove the API stability is more longer than one release, so it's you can build your own strategy on that. Yeah, I, and I totally get it. It's uh, at least for a year back, it's very important to have all the new updates, all the new features, all the great work that everybody is doing. Another question is more around the Go control plane. Mm -hmm. So we do have a problem with Go control planes release cycles not aligned with Envoy release cycles. For example, currently the last version from Go control plane produces a deprecated error because it wasn't updated with the latest. Is there any thinking on aligning them? So it's kind of more a wish list than a question, I must say. Yeah, go ahead. So uh, 
previously the the data plane and the actual server code in the control plane were all versioned together. Um, in the current months, we're actually working on a release plan where the data plane and the code will be versioned separately, and we will we are targeting a 1.0 shortly. Um, so hopefully, those problems will no longer be an issue for people. Uh, we've had a lot of requests to get that, and then we just haven't had the bandwidth to manage uh, release cycles like that since it's such a small scale project. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, we are we are working to fix that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, anyone else? Let me check if I have any online questions. If you have no more questions, so I can wrap up quickly. All right. Well, All right. thanks everybody for attending. And yeah, please uh, drop a review on the Sketch app and uh, enjoy the conference. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, I'm still around. If you want to ask me a question privately, you're welcome to do so. Thank you. Thank you.